Much has been made recently about the electrification of transportation. Now you've heard of the Chevrolet Volt. If you haven't, you've obviously been living under a rock because General Motors has made a big noise about this car. You already knew about the Toyota Prius. Uh, there's also the Nissan Leaf, which is a full plug-in vehicle. The point being, and maybe why you're gonna be seeing more and more of these vehicles going forward, is that we've got new cafe regulations coming in the year 2016. These manufacturers, if they wanna sell pickup trucks and minivans and big uh, powerful Hemis and so forth, they're gonna to need to be electrified on other vehicles to get the mileage requirements. And that's why vehicles like this exist. Now, the Chevrolet Volt. You've probably seen plenty about this. You know that it's a plug-in hybrid. I charge this up overnight. First 30, 35 miles that I drive are gonna be fully electric. It's got a small gasoline engine to pick up uh, when, the, when my, that mileage is crossed and then take me all the way to grandma's house if I need to. No range anxiety. Now you're thinking, James, you're holding this and you're looking at a Prius. Well, check it out. Very soon, your friendly Toyota dealer is going to have a vehicle just like this. It's a Prius you already know and love, but it's a plug-in hybrid. A Little bit different than the Volt though, in that you plug this in, same way. Charges much faster though, because it's only got a about a 12 mile range as opposed to the 30 mile range on this or 70 plus mile range on the Nissan Leaf. Now, some might say that kind of makes it not such an attraction because you want as much electric drive as you possibly can. But let's think this through. This vehicle is gonna retail for about $28,000. It gets about 50 miles per gallon. It's a normal Prius in its day-to-day -day driving once that electric power is, is depleted. The Volt, closer to $40,000. Now you're getting you know, additional electric miles, no doubt about that, that'll save you money and gas, but it really becomes an issue of how you are driving. Myself, this would not work. My daily drive is way more than 12 miles, so I plug my car in like a good little soldier, I drive all day long, uh, sorry, let me rephrase that, I drive the first 12 miles, not all day long, and it switches over to a regular gasoline powered car, which is still good, it's a Prius, it gets 50 miles per gallon, but that's the extent of my plug-in life. I buy a Volt, I obviously get a little bit longer. But the point being is that if I had a smaller commute, say somebody who just has a six mile to and from work drive, now this starts to make sense. It has the ability to go all the way to grandma's house if you need to because it does have the gasoline engine. It is a normal fuel sipping Toyota Prius, but it now makes sense when I really look at how I'm driving, what I really need with my transportation. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the point of this segment. We've got some great vehicles coming. Electrification of transportation is on, and it's not gonna go away. These are not little cool science experiments that uh, are maybe just gonna be uh, something used by their PR machines and then fade away. These vehicles are here to stay, and you should be considering using them, but only after you take a hard look at how you are using your car in your day-to-day -day life. If you've got a short commute, maybe you run the kids to school, then you go to the grocery store and you're back in five miles, this is gonna work for you great, and it's less expensive. Now you've got a little longer commute, you wanna take advantage of, of all that electric, electrification of the business can offer, now you're heading for this. You've got an even longer commute, and you're only gonna use the car for your commute, and you're not gonna be, you know, need to head off to Vegas with it or something like that. Then you look at the full electric Nissan Leaf. The point being, you have to look at the business or how, how you are gonna use your car, what your personal transportation is. We are coming to a point in our automotive life where we are buying our car based on our propulsion that we want to own. It's not just how cool is it, what color is it, how fast is it, it's about the actual propulsion that's part of the vehicle. That is absolutely revolutionary and these are the vehicles that are gonna drive us there.